The EU has played its cards. Here's what's up next for Microsoft Activision Acquisition. I don't really think it'll ever get easier to say Activision Acquisition, but that's what we're talking about today. Microsoft's and Xbox's $70 billion to purchase of the gaming giant. Now, the EU has issued its ruling today, and as expected, they're gonna go to phase two. Now, this has pretty much been the expectations from day one. First off, Microsoft didn't offer any remedies or concessions leading up to this, and we kinda just figured this is what's gonna happen. After all, it's a trillion dollar company trying to spend $70 billion dues to buy a gaming giant. Of course, it's gonna be going to phase two. Now. All that being said, before we dive into the details here, this actually feels a little bit lighter than I was even anticipating for some of their concerns. And so while there's obviously what's going on in the UK, I think the UK has more concerns potentially than the EU. And so let's just dive in because we already know Microsoft's, some of Microsoft's responses to what the EU is concerned about, but it really breaks down into three core areas. So I'm gonna roll the footage here of the blog post that they put out and why we dive into the details. So the three main concerns and three main concerns coming out of the EU are concerns for distribution of console and PC video games. That is the first one. Uh, Multi-game subscription services and or cloud gaming streaming services. That is the second one. And then the third one's a little awkward at PC operating systems. So the first major concern here, as they write, they say the transaction may significantly reduce competition on the markets for the distribution of console console and PC video games, including multi-game subscription services and or cloud game streaming services for PC operating systems. So first off, game distribution on consoles. One of the things that gets lost here, and I think Microsoft will make this argument pretty loudly, is that first off, consoles are not a massive market. They're not anything like mobile markets. They're not anything like actually the PC operating market, like your OEMs, like your Dells and your Lonovos and all that. Like it, consoles is actually a very small gaming market in itself. And so the distribution of consoles really just means that, hey, like we're concerned that Microsoft is going to basically shut down Call of Duty and only put it on their consoles. Now, Microsoft has addressed that time and time again, but specifically, they are concerned, uh, the commission is concerned that by acquiring Activision Blizzard, Microsoft may foreclose access to Activision Blizzard's consoles and PC video games, especially to high profile and highly successful games, so-called AAA games, such as Call of Duty. So the real key here of this initial argument is that Microsoft's gonna snatch up all this IP and then immediately shut off PlayStation. And that is the primary concern. I think from the entire industry, it's the Call of Duty being shut off from other platforms, which is why Microsoft has time and time again come out screaming and saying, look, we're not gonna pull Call of Duty. Now they're gonna have to put that in writing and maybe that's what they're waiting for. And then it becomes a contractual obligation because Phil Spencer saying on a podcast, hey, we're not gonna pull it from PlayStation doesn't have any merit. It has to be written in the contract and so maybe that is going to be one of the remedies that microsoft will pursue but realistically the distribution is a little odd because on the pc side specifically microsoft is not a big distributor of pc games i mean how many times do you go to the microsoft store to buy all your stuff we know that they're not massive because they put all their stuff on steam and that's where they get the majority of their sales and so obviously on the pc side you have steam you also have epic you also have other launchers as well and microsoft doesn't even really have its own launcher other than the store and even by that metric they're pretty far i think they're they claim they're out of the top five when it comes to the pc distribution so really it it's focused on the console side, which you could make the argument that there's three primary consoles, right? Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. And well, at, uh, of those three, they are in third place. They're the smallest of the console makers, uh, a dedicated console makers at this time. So the console side is definitely more valid, but again, it seems like it's on the console side, it's not the distribution, I guess. I guess you can kind of argue that depending on how you look at it, but really what they're talking about is taking Call of Duty off of PlayStation, which we all know Microsoft does not want to do because it's not, the financial incentives are not there. And Microsoft has already made the argument to the UK that says, look, even if we did take all of the, U the, all the Call of Duty players away from PlayStation, they would still be larger than Xbox at the end of the day. So just kind of keep that in mind as Microsoft has already combated some of these arguments. Now, the next challenge area for the EU is when it comes to multi-game subscriptions, basically Game Pass, they, and they write, when it comes to multi-game subscription services and or cloud game streaming services in particular, the commission is concerned that by acquiring Activision Blizzard, Microsoft may foreclose access to the detriment of its rivals of console and PC gamers that offer the services to its own PC and console video games, which are a key for the 
provisions of blah, 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 blah. So effectively, it's the same thing as the PC and console distribution. It's like, look, if Microsoft owns Activision, they could cut Call of Duty off from, from other vendors. They could potentially pull it from an app store, from Apple and, and Google Play and other vendors. But as we already know, Microsoft is infantile when it comes to how big they are in the mobile gaming segment. They're very, very small. And so this argument feels the least substantiated, mostly because, again, it's not so much Microsoft launching its own store, it's more so them pulling Call of Duty from other platforms, at least in how I interpret it. Again, not a lawyer, especially not one in the EU, but reading through this, that's how it logically seems to be, is that, again, if Microsoft promises that Call of Duty will not be pulled from other platforms and could be available to other vendors, then they very well likely could get this through, get the acquisition through. And Microsoft could make a good valid argument saying like, look, we already do this on the PC side. You can buy Forza in Steam. And that is a competing platform at the end of the day. Now, the really interesting sort of one that is outside here a little bit is the PC operating systems argument. The commission, as written, the commission has concerned that the proposed acquisition may reduce competition on the market for PC operating systems. In particular, the commission is concerned that Microsoft may reduce the ability of rival providers of PC operating systems to compete with Microsoft's operating system Windows by combining Activision Blizzard's games and Microsoft's distribution of games via cloud and streaming on Windows. This could discourage users to buy non-Windows PCs. Okay, that is... Right now, the, the PC market is, and I un potentially understand where the EU is coming from, Microsoft owns like over 90% of the desktop. Now, Mac gets a lot of credit and, and a lot of mind share, but when it comes to actual units sold, Windows still pushes more content or more devices out in the marketplace. And by putting Call of Duty only on the PC, that could reduce the likelihood that somebody would buy a Mac or potentially a Linux device. It's an argument. I don't, at this point, I think that ship has sailed so many years ago that it's not really relevant. Like, I would, there's more merit to my opinion of the EU being concerned about the distribution on PC, like Steam or Windows Store. That to me is a much more valid argument than saying this might actually mean we see uh, less Macs sold or less Linux devices sold. So, that argument. That that one's just the oddest one. Um, but, you know, those are the three primary concerns coming out of the EU, all of which none of them seem like significantly overbearing to the point that Microsoft could never be able to recover from this. Now, the biggest thing that is going against Microsoft in this entire acquisition is the fact that they are a huge company. If they weren't such a big company, this wouldn't be an issue at all. If they were a hundred billion, well, they wouldn't have the cash to be able to buy $70 billion. But either way, I think Microsoft's biggest issue is that they're just Microsoft at the end of the day. And companies are concerned when Microsoft wants to buy anything, especially of this size. Keep in mind, Sony could do the same thing with Destiny. And Destiny is a pretty darn big game, but they didn't have to go through the same hurdles that Microsoft is doing because Sony is not as big as Microsoft at the end of the day. Day. More interestingly, this quote came out from the Take Two uh, CEO. He says uh, he has no issues with Microsoft's planned purchase of Activision and says most of his competitors feel the same way, apart from, well, there's one big company that is, but apart from that, no. Uh, you know, this is from the Xbox News Twitter account, and we all know what that big company is. Clearly, it seems like the biggest piece of pushback that is happening is Sony's lobbying effort to end this and put up big hurdles. Because, granted, if you're Sony, I totally understand why they would be doing this. It's your competitors going to try to buy Call of Duty, the biggest first-person shooter title on the planet. They just announced they hit a billion dollars in like three days. Now, granted, that includes all the pre-sales up until there. But either way, Sony's looking at this thing like, we got to give it all we got. Because if we don't, if we just fold over and say, this is great, then you know that's a disservice to their shareholders, shareholders and to their, their fans at that. And so very clearly, Sony is lobbying very hard to get this stopped. We will see if they have the muscle to be able to do it. It's I, Microsoft still seems confident that they're going to be able to get it through this. And see, even seeing what the EU is truly concerned about, it doesn't seem... It seems like they've still got a pretty good shot at this. Granted, they're not just going to be able to sail through. I fully expect that they are going to have to put in legal writing what they're going to do with all the assets. And they might just come out and be like, look, we'll offer them for 10 years or something uh, non 
you know, non-definitive, meaning not an infinite amount of time, but if Microsoft seems like they're willing to play ball to get this done. Because again, I go back to what Microsoft's best argument is for actually being able to buy Activision, and that is building their own mobile app store, which is something the EU is very, in, very interested in because they're already looking at Apple and Google for monopoly like practices or duopoly, I guess in this case for app store ownership and Microsoft could come to the market with a game store if they're allowed to close this deal, which could be enough to tip the EU. Either way, this is the news we've been waiting to drop. Now, the big question becomes, when do they have to make a decision? So the EU has 90 working days. So by the 23rd, it's a little confusing, until March of, I believe it's March 23rd of 2023, the EU has to issue a ruling on this. So we've got 90 days, and that lines up almost perfectly with Microsoft's initial expectation of June 30th. And so the next big thing we're waiting to drop is the US. So now we've got the EU moving to phase two. I fully expect the US to do something similar. And so to make sure you're always updated on everything that's happening in this acquisition, the world of Xbox and Microsoft and beyond, make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is me.